Hello y'all, this is the Ninja DC. And it's interesting to see that the show staff wasted no time jumping into the CMC this season. Which, this season being focused on cutie marks sort of actually makes sense. And yeah, I've never wished to be more wrong live during an episode than when AB first woke up with her cutie mark. Unfortunately, I was right, but the episode is still good by offering an inverse of Apple Bloom's regular episode structure. What I mean is this episode tackles the insecurities of a post-cutie mark filly, all this being kicked off by an actual non-luniception bombshell that was Babs got her cutie mark. This event makes the following fears come out in a believable fashion as the CMC are so obsessed with getting their cutie marks they haven't really pondered what, well, after. Three big fears that are foreshadowed here were getting a bad cutie mark and being stuck with it, like, you know, a... <laughs> Therapy Dolphin, still being part of the CMC even though you got your kitty mark, and the whole friendship thing along with that, and the family reaction, mostly that was for, well, AB. And while it was revealed all the CMC get similar nightmares, the star this time was, well, Apple Bloom, which makes sense as it inverts her defining character trait, well, in most of her episodes. What I mean is, AB has always sort of been the most cutie mark obsessed of the CMC. It's how she was introduced, and it's how she had that disaster of an episode that was cutie pox. The rest of the CMC got a non cutie mark focused episode, but for Apple Bloom, it's always been cutie mark or Apple Family. What this episode does is to pull the monkey's paw trick and gives her what she always wanted, only to create new fears with it. This is not cutie pox, where she presses the red button that you should have not pressed but addressing a legitimate fear she was just honestly never considered. And since this is a Luniception episode, they are able to give that fear a nice symbolic form in the form of AB's shadow. Seriously, that shadow is awesome. This episode does a good job with the CMC as well, as they feel like children. Like I said before, children characters I feel need to be represented as ignorant in terms of, well, experience with the world, but not stupid. And this episode plays up on that to a T by having the episode's main conflict being derived from the CMC's fears of the unknown, that is the unknown past cutie marks because, you know, they haven't exactly got those yet. Honestly, I found this the best writing from Joss Haber yet, and much better representation of the CMC than Polsky last season. The awesomeness of Luna aside, this episode does have a few flaws. Put bluntly, once the jig is up, the dream story sort of becomes slightly tedious, and extremely predictable, especially the last one. Once the audience figures out this is a dream, the weight of the conflicts in said dream sort of loses its, well, weight. Especially when they start to moving further and further away from reality. I honestly feel the episode would have been stronger if it was one dream sequence that just keeps going on and on and getting crazier and crazier. That way we still have the foreshadowed conflicts but they are not segmented into blatant obviousness. That and while we suspect it is a dream still, we are still unsure exactly what it is and as I've said before, uncertainty is a key to suspense. Or in short, the dream sequence should have progressed like Bloodborne story, from a simple hunt to full on love also, seriously, why no Babs? Couldn't you have at least shown her a photo or a cutie mark focused montage? Come on, give Babs some love. So in short, I found this episode that should have ditched the Groundhog Day reference for a more linear story. However, the episode certainly is a step up from Joss Haber's previous work in my mind, so I consider it overall a, well, good episode. So this is the Ninja DC. Keep calm and an open mind. silly things from your movies. It's about waiting carefully for the perfect moment. The Lavender and the Ricard.